So, um, big difference between what I'm going to talk about and what you've just heard. I have 50 minutes in a class, maybe, uh, not in a whole term. So there are, the flipped classroom provides a whole lot of opportunities for, for me as a librarian to learn more about the students before I see them. And that means I can adjust what I tell them or what I want to talk about based on what I know about them through, this, through a few simple exercises. Um, just a bit about me, I've been teaching at Waterloo for over, inter information literacy at Waterloo for over 20 years, starting out with a stack of overheads, uh, you know, CD-ROM search by overhead. Not fun. Um, <laughs> my use of learn, I'm still learning, and I'm thankful to all the assistance I get from Mary and uh, Samar and Jane. Um, the classes that I'm going to be making comments about, there are, there's one um, biology class, which is a graduate course, and that's small, 10, this year was 10 students. I, um, I'm responsible for 15% of their final grade. So that's the only thing I do right with this kind of instruction, which is really part of, you know, th there's some stake in it for the students. Um, the others are undergrad courses I've been involved with. Um, one for I don't know how many years, um, first year chemical engineering and first year systems design engineering this year. They tend to be 100 to 150 students and trying to teach people anything during the first term that they are at UW is a nightmare and is almost a waste of time. Um, the fourth year students in chemical engineering I've been seeing, they're a little more motivated and they, they can be up to 100 students as well. So in many cases I'm dealing with large numbers um, of people. Okay. So in case you weren't sure what information literacy is, it's the basis of lifelong learning. So that's one of those attributes in the OCAV list of attributes. Um, and what it, what it actually means is being able to recognize when information is needed and being able to locate it, evaluate it, and use it effectively and ethically um, uh, as needed. So that's a lot of um, th there's a lot packed into that. Okay, here's my typical situation, as I already mentioned. Prof says, come and teach my students how to search PubMed. Oh, and how to cite. Okay, <laughs> that's it. <laughs> um, I don't know anything about the search skills of the students. Oh, well, the prof will ask them. Well, how, you know, are you okay at search? Oh, yeah, yeah, we know how to search. But the literature says people vastly overrate uh, their own skills. And so I, I, it, I guess it, it, I find it very um, discouraging when a faculty member will say, oh yeah, I asked the class, and they said, they don't need to see you. They know everything. <sighs> okay. The other thing is that it's usually I'm seeing students for one 50-minute class. Uh, sometimes it's less, sometimes it's, oh, well, I could fit you in for about 15 minutes. Can you do, you know, search PubMed and all citing and uh, same stuff, but just in 15 minutes? That's a problem. And uh, related to that, a lot of the sessions for information literacy tend to be offered at the beginning of term. But when did the students actually get down to working on their assignments or their essays or whatever? At least by no sooner than the mid, mid part of the term, maybe after the midterms even. So if I've spent all this time, 50 minutes with them at the beginning of the term, they're not gonna remember any of it, and, and they don't. And then the other part of this situation is, for, for me for sure, lecture fatigue. It is, I just can't stand in front of a room of 150 people and be fresh and describe the benefits of searching PubMed and all the nuances and so on. I've just done it so many times. So I'm very happy to have another way of doing things. So for me, uh, you know, in case people weren't sure about the flipped classroom, so in essence, what would have been my 50-minute lecture demo 
is now content that's mastered outside the class using videos, using text, using quizzes, whatever I can come up with, and supported by Learn. Without Learn, I really couldn't do it that way. And the homework then becomes applying what the students learned in outside of class, but applying it to situations I give them in class in a very active learning kind of way. So it could be, uh, well, I'll show you an, an example will come up. Um, it's much more interesting for me to fill in information for students if they've, if they've been asked to describe something about a PubMed search and what they did or didn't do, um, than to stand up and go through all the points. Um, and so far, they have all done the out-of-class work especially those ones that don't, aren't getting graded. Um, I had thought about going into the class beforehand and saying, hi, I'm going to see you next week, and we're going to do this, and you're going to do this outside the class, and so on. Well, somehow, maybe the profs are just really good at saying, you will do it or else. I don't know. But they do it. OK, so outside the class, learning and practicing fundamentals. So one of the fundamentals of searching for information is knowing how to find keywords from a statement or a question that somebody hands you. How do you turn that question into keywords that are going to get you the information you need and not you know, a lot of garbage with maybe a few good things somewhere in, but you've had to go through 10 or 15 screens in order to find those things. Um, so that's the main focus out of, uh, for, their, for the students um, out of class. And so they, they get to watch a video on different, uh, how to, like a really short video, one and a half minutes on how to choose keywords, and another one and a half on how to put the keywords together with and and or in order to um, get more out of the search. Um, and they submit their, their assignment that I get, have given them through Learn um, I've been using quiz because that's what I know and I like it. <laughs> and then I can actually know who, wh which student is, is doing what as well. So um, they will submit it and in these big classes I usually have a standard response saying, well this is what I was expecting you to do, da 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 da. But if there's some students that are really out in left field, I can go directly, email directly to them and say, come and see me, we should talk about this more. So they also get a chance to check their own learning. Um, I have, um, there was an, a wonderful study done in Quebec on first year um, undergraduates, and they have a list of 20 some questions that they gave as part of this, this uh, research. And I've been using questions from there because I know, okay, this question is gonna test for this, this question is gonna test for that, and so on and I know they've been well vetted. So I give those three questions, and I know whether they've seen the video or not based on how they responded. Um, so that helps me, and, and if, if they're using it as a check for themselves, it helps them as well. And then the other thing I always do is ask them to send me any questions they might have about searching or finding information, or using the library, anything that's relevant to me and the library. And what I like about Learn is that, and using the quiz thing, format as well, is I can export all those questions into an Excel spreadsheet, and then it's really easy to sort them and see, oh my god, they're like this number that are, ha that are anxious about such and such. And so it gives me a sense of, what I might want to do in the class, I might want to tweak it a bit based on what I've seen in these questions. And it's that exporting the factor that's so helpful. And similarly with the, um, with the, with the quizzes or uh, the assignments, I can look at how did everybody do on assignment one, a uh, question one. And that is so useful. R I mean, rather than having to spread out the paper and try and read them each. It, it's um, very helpful. So in-class activities usually begins with 
um, me putting up a search saying, here's a search for a, on a topic. Get into a small group and tell me, is that a good search? Would that actually get what the person wants? How would you make it better or different? And they just, so it takes what they've learned and they're in groups, so if some of them didn't quite get it, others will have helped them out. And they really thrash through these, um, and I usually have spelling errors and various things, uh, irrelevant words and so on. And then we, I mean, we can discuss that as the each group reports what they think. And um, that's been really, um, or in the big classes, it's one or two groups or three or four. Um, so then often I have a, um, a worksheet where they're going to now do, now that they know the basics, I want them to apply, I want them to search in some very different databases to see what they can get using the same search string, um, but different kinds of information. And, and that way introducing the different types of sources that are available to them. And that is submitted as a, as a quiz. Um, and the other thing I always do is I introduce the subject guide for that course, well, for that, for that discipline. So at UW, there's a librarian for every department, and every librarian has constructed a subject guide, which is like a, uh, a concentrated, sh uh, well, not so concentrated. It's the, the, the essence of the tools that you need in that discipline in order to find information and then there, there are other bits added on too. But it's, you know, rather than going to the main website and being overwhelmed, go to the subject guide and it's all there laid out for you. So, and that then I get to link into learn. So all of this, uh, what I'm doing is being linked in within the course content. It's not a separate module somewhere or other. It's, and I have uh, some images I can show you about that. Okay, so what I get from LEARN, why it's worth my while. <laughs> Some days it isn't, <laughs> but it is mostly. Data, feedback, um, as I said, analysis of the questions that students ask me. Um, may shift my plans for the class. Um, I can s find out the problem with an assignment, you know, or problem, and it's always small bits of language that somebody, why did those people do that, but everybody else did this? Oh, it's the way I've written this out that's confusing, so I have to make that better. And I often don't get to see what the students produced at the end of the term. But that's really about the only artifact that would help me know whether I had any impact on them. So by being part of LEARN and the course, I can see what they've submitted. And all I'm really interested in is the reference list, but I might want to see in the introduction how were they using those references. Um, so that's a great advantage too. Um, I cover more topics than I would in just 50 minutes with no prep. You'd be surprised at how much time it takes people to get the idea of picking keywords and structuring a, uh, a search. So they can do it ad nauseum before the class and, and really have it down pat. So therefore we cover more in class. And in the cl case of the biology course, I was under a lot of pressure to go from two classes down to one class. And I could not have done it without flipping the classroom. So this is the, l but my, I think this is my last slide. Um, impact on learning, it's, it's hard to say, but at least with this, the grad course, um, where they're doing a lot of writing for me, um, I'm finding that the reflections that they have about the searches they've done, um, the databases they've used, they're more insightful, uh, more, more detailed, and they're coming up with interesting ways of using some of the search tools that I've talked about, say the search alerts, for example, which everybody's, no one's ever heard of before. Um, and just much more analytical. To whether this is a fabulous group this year <laughs> in biology or not, I was not getting that level of engagement in the previous, I don't know, five or six years I've been doing this. Um, okay, so introduced advanced tools, um, more active learning in class. 
Um, I think one of the best, we always know the best way to teach people is one-on-one. -on -one. So here I am in a classroom where I can help someone at the point of their information need, not sort of give them a whole bunch of stuff they may or may not need, this is what they need right now. Um, and when I look at some bi bibliographies, um, I do see a broader range of sources. So. So those are my, that's my slide part, and I can show you a couple of images that I captured. Uh, oops, under images. Okay, so is there, ooh, it's ugly. Um, well, I can just sort of this is basically what I would have for a um, first year group of students. So here are the learning objectives, which they don't care about. <laughs> but I put them in anyway. And I tell them when this is due. Um, in this case, one of the problems were they weren't reading their case studies before they came to the class. So how are they going to make up search statements if they don't even know what their subject is? Oh, that was a disaster. So I was getting them to get into these things, uh, try them out. And then this one, um, what was this one? I don't know. Um, these were the videos. Um, brainstorming your topic, searching in a database, referencing your, your work. And then there were other things they were submitting. So it's, it's like, when I say it's a, wor a worksheet, it's kind of laid out. I tried to do that. It doesn't always happen. Um, let's see. Okay. So, that's in class. Oh, here's an example. Okay. What's the answer? <laughs> If I had a clicker, if I had a clicker. Um, how many say A? Oh. How many say B? Okay. How many say C? Okay, there's been a lot of sitting on the fence or others. <laughs> how many say D? Okay. How many say, how many don't know? Right, you need to be in one of my first year classes. <laughs> <laughs> so, it's A. If you choose D, you're going to get primary school plus high school, middle school, I don't know, distance school, whatever. So without primary school, th this is going to get you, uh, this is not going to get you enough, the right stuff. You have more weeding through to do. So this is the same as this one, except for the word effect. And there are a bunch of words in searching that are extraneous. Um, if we're looking at family relations, academic results, and primary school, effect is implied. So because if you, and if you add in that extra word effect, you're putting another condition on the search which shrinks your pool of results. Now for the average undergrad, that doesn't matter. They only need whatever, five, ten. But if you're a graduate student, you need to be aware that those words like effect, and there, there are a whole bunch of them. Um, and this is, this is basically the same thing, but it's the effect word. But, so, but if they had watched, the, if you had watched the videos, you would know because the videos explain about those kinds of words and stuff. So um, we've made a lot of um, videos in the library. We have great co-op students from the library school at Western, and they make great videos for us. We just say, here are the topics. And so we, we have lots of things that we can um, put into a class or put into learn. And, and for something that we don't have, there are tons of YouTube videos that all the other librarians like us that have maybe more time 
are creating. So I didn't have a video, short, nice video, on how to search the database Scopus, but I found one on the web. And so that's, that's what I gave them. Um, I don't think it's worth looking at any of the rest of them. I think you can't really see this. Sorry about that. My capture soft software is crummy. OK, questions? Can I pass the mic to anyone? <laughs> yep. Were you actually using iClickers to facilitate these kinds of discussions? So no. how would you elicit feedback from students? You mean in the class? Yeah. Well, in the, for example, the ChemEng 100, which is a three-hour lab, I do something and then I, you know, I give them something and then I, I walk up and down the rows oh. asking, you know, checking. It's a good way of reminding them that this is a class and not a face Facebook such, you know, session. Um, but that's been my, you know, I get great exercise. It's the, it's the, uh, the banked multimedia classroom in engineering. But in um, the systems design one, it was a small room, even though there were a lot of students in it, and I just asked questions. And if they're in groups, it's easy to say, well, this group, you tell me something. This okay. group. That was my next thing. If, I know they're submitting something online, but are you prompting for discussion inside of class about what the answers are? Um, well, they're getting this automatic, as soon as they submit, they're getting this automatic answer that okay. says, um, thank you, you know, the, the, uh, uh, basically the right answer is this for these reasons. And in, in fact, what I just went through is what would I would have in that. If you just do it this way and forget the primary people you're missing, you're not going to get the content. So it's more than just yes, no. It's, it's quite a detailed uh, answer. Yeah. Yes. That's a lot easier than to each one of them. <laughs> Um, so uh, you mentioned in when you're in class, mm -hmm. you have them do a quiz that they submit. Yes. So do they do that in class? And yes. Then, and then do you look at it yes. afterwards, or what do you do? Yes. Uh, well, I mean, it's mostly where I use that the most is with the grad students because they're getting graded. So they're doing things, working away, comparing three different databases and telling me why they think one's better than the other, and then they submit it, and I grade that. Um, with the other ones, I used to, but I haven't with the big classes recently. I used to get them to submit in their group the results of three different aspects of the course, and that was before Learn, and my email box is getting filled up. So I have stopped doing that. So are the, are the questions that you ask like multiple choice ones, like the example you showed, or are they, uh, like do you give them, you know, something to look for and then say, you know, give me your search terms or what did you come up with and have like long answer questions or what do you do? Yeah, I've, I've done some of that. Well, mostly with the, with the, the first year students, I'm trying to think of now what, we, what I did with the fourth year engineering. That was a while ago now. Um, it depends. Uh, it depends on how much time I've got and, right. and well, the size of the class. Um, ask, tell me your question again. I'm kind of, I think I've mixed um, it up in my head. I was, I was wondering whether, uh, so you, you, have a you have a quiz that they do before right. the class. Right. And then you take a look at that. Right. And then you mentioned in the when you do the in class stuff, you have a quiz that you do in class. Okay. On it, learn. It's right. not it's it's in the format of a quiz, but it's really a worksheet. Okay. So it could be a form if I knew how to do forms or something. It could be something, you know, else, but I only know quiz, so it's a quiz <laughs> worksheet. <laughs> and I I mostly when I'm do, if I've done it with the um, the first years, um, I don't know if they yeah I guess they I gave I did send them feedback, 
into their individual, to their groups. But it hasn't been recent that I've done that. Okay. It's, no. And do you customize the like uh, instructions and stuff for particular classes? Pretty or well. Do you have, yeah, you know, pretty well. Of, you know, more generic stuff that could be just. Well, those, the question that I showed you is one of like twenty that I've used in many different ways. Right. Um, so I don't. Why I customize, or what are the ones I'm going to ask them of the twenty? Um, but in terms of how the information is laid out, oh, for example, the first year Kemenj, the prof always talks about sourcing information. So I didn't call it finding information, I just called it sourcing information, and I was using his sort of language and stuff. Right. So I, I play around with it. I also used um, this year for that class, instead of just answering their questions um, with you know, my, my title, I used something from their comments where somebody said, I, know, I don't know how to cite something, something, something. So I was just grabbing from the questions they'd sent to me. I don't know if it was of interest to them or not, but right. I, it was a, an attempt to show that I was reading and paying attention. Yeah. So it's, it, you found this to be a successful strategy. So mm -hmm. has there been uh, uptake by other librarians? for other departments? I don't know. There's one the sitting thing. beside you. Maybe she will. I'm actually going to be talking to Scott. I'm hoping to put that in. Too, uh, <laughs> <laughs> it's not, it's not, it's the senior honors undergrad paper for the first time. I was in it in the winter term, or the fall term. Yeah. And so it was an experiment. And we're going to be doing it again in the, the winter term, um, looking at the evaluation that they gave us uh, to see if there's different ordering and, and various things. But I think this could be really helpful because it's a small class, but still there's a, a, a broad range of, well, have you used this or haven't you? Um, even those mm -hmm. types of questions and then maybe be able to tailor things, maybe have some small groups because it just meets one hour a week. So it's, it's, a very, it's a seminar type thing. It's very different. So, yeah. Right. Um, other library, it depends on the discipline. If you're in math, there's not much uh, research, literature searching that goes on until you're a grad student. Um, you know, and there's, there's more in my department, so there's a lot more in biology, but faculty choose to do it themselves, so you know, I can't force myself, but. <laughs> Other questions? Anything else? Um, I know one I had was, um, you talked about how you were reducing the amount of time you were in class with them, and you'd been under pressure to do yeah. that anyway in one situation. Um, do you have a sense that um, the students are finding the out-of-class work a lot, or, or is that, you know, is that, are you able to, um, to make that switch well, without mm. getting too much pushback? Because one of the things you do sort of worry about is that you put you know, a lot of stuff online, and you reduce the class time, and it's just more and more happening all right. the time for the students. Um, no, they didn't, because um, it, it, the work was really not more than about half an hour to 40 minutes work. Mm -hmm. um, the difference was that between one class and two classes, I was doing a lot of talking, mm -hmm. in, and that's what took up, takes up a lot of time, yeah. talk and demo, talk and demo. So I wasn't doing that. I didn't go over what they had learned on their own. I, and I tried to make it, and that's why I had that worksheet. So I said, well, here's the libguide, these are the databases, I'm here to help you. And that's the big thing. Someone's got a topic that's, well, I can't find anything on my topic. Well, oh, <laughs> maybe you shouldn't look in the engineering database. Maybe you should look in something else. So that's the kind of talking I prefer to do, rather than standing in front of the, yeah. the screen rolling through PowerPoint. It strikes me too that um, for students who have differing levels of skill coming in, that this is more adaptable to them and that people who have a, are at very low level have the opportunity maybe to listen to things a couple of times or have more oh, time yeah. to think about it, whereas the students who are pretty familiar with it could probably zip through it pretty fast and that's fine. Yeah, that's yeah, fine. That's, that's fine. Yeah, absolutely. But I mean, we see this a lot in our drop-in classes where you have no idea about <laughs> the backgrounds of people and you're, the class is keeping current with research and they don't even know how to choose keywords. And literally, you might spend the entire hour and a half with one person trying to get them through that. Mm -hmm. So I'm actually going to try and flip the class for one of these K-12 
keeping current sessions that we offer in, in February and see if, if I can get people to do work before they come to a voluntary workshop. <laughs> we'll see. see? Okay. Yeah. Well, it sounds like we could all use a little practice on choosing keywords. <laughs> I think so. I think so. <laughs> we should get you to come to CT and give us oh, a little bit. I could do that. Anyway, well, I'd really like to thank both Anne and Stephen. It was really great to have you here today. And um, I hope we've got some people out in the broader world. And this will be made into um, YouTube videos, which will be housed on our CT website. So if anybody wants to access the wisdom, it will be there. Great. Thank you. Thank you.